So the thing is, uh, when you guys were doing the second record, it seemed like everything had been like taken up a notch. Right. As far as like, it was more violent, more stuff about sex, more explicit stuff about sex and everything. So like, was that a direct response to Cube leaving or was that something you guys had been planning to do? It wasn't, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't because of Cube leaving. It was more like, all the flack we was getting from everybody else. You know what I mean? Like, so, you know, you got this group uh, protesting, you got these people talking this, talking that. So we like, shit, let's make them more mad. Let's, let's, you know what I mean? That's how we was thinking. Like, let's give them something really to just be mad about. So we're going to talk about this and we're going to do it like that. And you then, know? um, with Easy Does It, there's like the whole Bootsy Collins element yeah. coming through. And yeah. I, I don't think that people talk about that or understand it a lot, but what was it about Bootsy Collins with Dre and E or, or you as well that made him kind of like a unofficial inspiration for a lot of you guys' material? I mean, Bootsy was dope, you know what I mean? So, and Dre and, uh, and E, they love Bootsy, you know what I mean? And Parliament and all of that, so. They was heavy into it, so they just, you know, put it in with our stuff, influence, you know what I mean? Like, merged it in with the stuff we was doing, and it just came out like that. Because if you listen to Niggas for Life, it's like a lot of little stuff from Parliament, yeah. you know, all up in there. So, yeah, I mean, they dope. Boosie's still dope. I still listen to Boosie on records. Absolutely. You know? And um, kind of speaking of that, the movement with Ruthless, one thing that I always think is so amazing is like people don't understand or appreciate like the diversity of the type of artists having michelle with the r&b right you know obviously having the black eyed peas later with the at band clan and having bone being so successful above the law above the law doc doc yomo malki yeah there's, there's so many yeah so with that yourself of course right but that being said what was it about how easy operated the label that enabled him to get all these different artists, JJ Fad. Yeah, you know, JJ so, Fad. So many different types of rap or different types of music in general and be successful with so many of them at basically the same time. Man, he he knew how to pick talent. You know what I mean? Like to me he just knew like if he liked something, some it has something to it. You know what I mean? Like he wasn't no lyricist, like he couldn't write rhymes and all of that, but he could pick artists. And if he if he saw something in him, it was it had to be something. You know what I mean? Because everybody down there that he picked ended up doing something. Right. You know what I mean? So he had a talent in picking artists. So since you mentioned the, the lyrics thing, there's two things I've always been curious as to why do you think, obviously Dre didn't write all his lyrics either, but nah. why do you think that people never really it didn't matter to people as much about Easy or Dre or whoever not writing their lyrics, whereas with other people, it's such a big deal. I think, man, because it was just so tight. That's that's the only reason I could I could give you is because it just it was so tight, and they and he did it so good. It sounded like he he wrote it. You know what I mean? It sounded like he wrote it. He had that distinctive voice. The beats was tight, and it just. Nobody really tripped off, and they knew, people knew he didn't write them, so, but they still didn't trip off of it. But nowadays, you know, if you don't write your rhymes, you get toe up, you know what I mean? You get criticized, even back then. But it's for some reason, they didn't criticize him or Dre. And it's interesting too, because I remember, especially when the movie Straight Outta Compton came out and they had the scene of him trying to learn how to rap Boys in the Hood or whatever. Right. But I also remember as a kid, Especially like with easier said than done when he says, yo, I don't do dope, but I'm dope, not a dope, but I'm dope than anybody who tries to cope. I remember when I heard that, I was like, yo, that's amazing how he flowed with it in the words. Like to me, it didn't matter whether he wrote it or not because of how he flowed. But what's crazy about that song too, Dre have a lot of people write, but Dre wrote that record. The, the lyrics on all of it? No, on that, that the lyric, all the lyrics on that song, oh, yeah. easier said than done, Dre wrote them lyrics for him. Hmm. And what, uh, <laughs> well, go ahead. No, that line you just said, it just made me think like, Dre wrote that. So when, uh, so what, what what did you see differently from Dre when he was focusing on writing versus focusing on the music? The music, he, he like a beast, man. 
he's like so serious when he's doing the music, like when he's doing the tracks and all of that. It's like when when he writing, it's like he would have other people write for him, and sometimes he would, you know, just pick up the pen and write. Like he wouldn't be like as serious as he would as doing the tracks. Like doing the tracks, he gonna be serious as hell. You know what I mean? Like damn near, like he's sinking into the music. Like you know what I mean? But writing, he he rarely would do that. He rarely would write back in the day. He would either have uh. I would write his stuff, Q would write something, or, or Doc would write his stuff. He rarely picked up a pen like, and wrote. <laughs>